education reporter for the Topeka Capital Journal. Today I have been on the phone um, getting reaction about, on the Gannon uh, school finance ruling. Uh, it has been interesting to uh, hear the reaction uh, that I have been getting from different school officials. Um, I've also been talking with some of our local legislators who are also um, members of their uh, local school boards. So kind of getting the legislative and school board member um, reaction. Um, they have said, uh, most of the education uh, folks that I've been talking to have said that um, they are uh, heartened or glad that the, um, the state Supreme Court justices have ruled that um, current funding levels are inadequate. Um, however, coming up with a dollar amount to, to make um, funding um, adequate for um, Kansas school districts is going to be another issue in and of itself. Uh, Angela, the, the court didn't specify a dollar amount to the people that you're talking to. Are they concerned by that? Do they want more guidance from the court? Um, they haven't specifically said that they want more guidance from the court. They just know that coming up with a dollar figure is going to be very tricky uh, given the um, um, uh, tax issues that the legislators are dealing with this session. Um, the um, you know shortfalls, uh, the budget shortfalls that the that the state is facing, you know, in in relation to school finance, given that that school funding is half of the you know um, state's budget. And we're talking about an increase in the range of 500 million to 900 million. Yes, that's about the figure that um, a lot of um, the folks that I talked to today kind of thought that that's what um, you know what the figure is going to end up being. Yeah, just depending. But, however, they have also said that any increases in school funding is just going to have to be gradual. It's not going to be one um, big lump sum of money that's going to come in right away. It's going to have to be phased in over three to four years um, in order to not shock, um, you know, the system, so to speak. And what, what would school districts be doing with this money as it comes in? Um, you know, most of them probably will be um, probably more than likely. It, my guess is that they would be going to uh, funding teacher salaries, um, funding um, other programs that perhaps they that they've had to cut um, over the years, um, tutoring programs, um, uh, just all kinds of of um, you know maybe um, enhancements, I guess, so to speak, that that they've had to cut over the years. Uh, you know, to account for the budget sure. cuts. Some of the factors in the decision today were uh, students struggling, black students and Hispanic students particularly struggling in math and reading proficiency. Correct, yes, and, and a lot a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of school districts are going to want to put more money uh, into instruction again to um, get the achievement levels of especially children in poverty back up, and yes, I, I would imagine that would be one of the first and foremost things that they would want to do with that money. You talk to school officials at the area, school districts here in, in Shawnee County, are, are they expressing optimism about this? I think the ruling was probably expected yes. uh, that it would be along this line, but it, are they optimistic about what happens next? They're really actually very uncertain about what's going to happen next. Yes, they're, they've all said, one, that you know, the ruling doesn't surprise us, two, Yes, we're happy about it, but then you know they're pretty much the next thing out of their mouths is, but we just don't know how it's all going to play out. Um, you know, we're happy that this happened, not uh, not, and it's not unexpected, but we just don't know how much money we're going to end up getting uh, here in the next um, couple of years. You were just on the phone with uh, was it Patrick Woods? Yes. That five hundred one. Yes. What did he have to say? Uh, again, um, he's someone who uh, has watched. Uh, uh, this legislation and the, these uh, school funding lawsuits uh, for years. Um, he said that, again, he's not surprised by today's ruling, he's happy about it, but that uh, lawmakers really now really need to get to work uh, to come up with a uh, funding formula. He said actually that the 2006 funding formula that the legislature came up with is something that he actually would prefer that they uh, go back to. He says that's, that's when um, the funding formula was considered to be constitutional and adequate, and he's hoping that um, that's the type of funding uh, formula that they'll go back to. 
If I understand correctly, just for the historical perspective, that formula uh, satisfied the courts, and then around 2010, uh, funding started to be removed from that, and that prompted the Gannon lawsuit in 2010, and then the state moved to the block grant system. And, uh, and what has that done for the local schools? Well, the, for, for at least the schools here in Shawnee County, um, they, they have all had to sustain cuts, even under the block grant funding. Um, when, when they were told that, that, they would, um, that their funding would be stable. Um, but they have experienced cuts, and um, you know, they're just um, you know, hoping that today's ruling is um, going to at least start them back on the path to getting the kind of funding that they need again. I think uh, that wraps it up. If we don't have any questions from our audience, let me take a look. Um, and so this afternoon, I'm just finishing up uh, getting reaction uh, for the uh, Gannon uh, ruling, and uh, I'll have something here early this evening. Thank you.